Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Fun Mathematics. This one is uh, episode number six. And yeah, and there was no new episode for some some time. I was I was um, quite quite busy recently, but so, but uh, yeah, but now I finally finally got some time, and also um, I needed to to, to make uh, make this episode uh, based on on request of my, one of my friend. Uh, so so today I would like to speak about Tyler's polynomial, but because um, this is going to be uh, talking for a longer time to explain everything, I will probably split the whole, whole thing into into two parts. One of them is going to be some basic basic properties of, of continuous and differentiable functions, and in the next part we will build the Tyler polynomial itself. So today we are going to speak about about continuous and differentiable functions so so what, what what this what this really means these are like key concepts because if you if you have some statement in an analysis about about function almost always you assume that the function is at least continuous so continuous functions are functions which are nice in some way that we, we can say something something good about them. If you don't have uh, continuity then, then the functions become very difficult to very difficult to handle. So so what the, what the continuity means um, like there there is a, there is a definition which which is my favorite and uh, and it, it it says that that continuous news functions don't change values too fast okay so this is this is of course not not a very exact statement because what does it mean don't change the values too fast but every time I'm, I see somewhere continuous I manually think if I if I know that the value of my function at some point x is equal to to fx then around it in, in some close close neighborhood in this part these values can be too too different. Yeah, so so I know that this this function has to look somewhat like a straight line. There can be there can be any any jumps like this that the value would be here like this and then and here it would be completely different. So so this 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 thing here means that it is too too big big change of of values of the of the function. So so this is this is not allowed. Yeah, so so we we know this. And uh, so, so how to how to define it exactly? So, what does it mean? Does it mean that for every every change I allow, I can, I can choose a change. So, so I can pick any arbitrary small change, and the, the definition is very similar to the definitions of, of limits. So, I pick a change which is epsilon. So, I say, okay, so the function can't change more than than epsilon. So, so what I know. That there exist exist a neighborhood, exist some some small small delta, such that if if I take all the all the axes, all the axes from x minus delta to x plus delta. So so let me turn to the picture. So so for every epsilon, uh, there exists some some really really small small delta here yeah, so so this is this is the delta size so there exists some small neighborhood such that this interval this such that for every for every y in inside of of this inside of this small neighborhood f y lies in small neighborhood of of epsilon so f y lies inside of of um, f x minus epsilon and f x plus epsilon. Yeah, so so really, really if I if I state it again, okay, so this change, okay, so I, I this is some limit how how much the function values can change. So I say, okay, so I would like to have this this small this this small change. So so this is this is the epsilon here. Epsilon is, is this part, is this 
the blue part here is the epsilon value for, for this particular case. Okay, so I say this is the maximum allow of change. Nothing else, nothing larger is possible. And the statement says, okay, so I can I can choose this delta, this delta neighborhood, this, this small part here, in such a way that everything inside of this small part is is inside of this epsilon limit I, I allowed. Yeah, so everything lies here. And, and this this is exactly what I want. Um, of course, uh, normally I don't I don't know any any relation. But what is the relation between between epsilon and delta? It could be an arbitrary uh, strange one. It it can also depend on the value of x. Uh, for every x, uh, the function can can the, the change of the function can be different. So for example, if I have a um, if I have a function like one one over x. This function is continuous inside of every point except point zero, but at some point zero the function is not defined, so, so testing continuity doesn't make any sense. But of course, if I go closer to zero, the change is getting larger and larger. So this function is changing larger and larger as I go close to zero. So this, like the, the rate of the change, is, is getting different at every point. So uh, sometimes uh, we use we use something called uniformly continuous, and this means that like for every for every value x, this this the relation between epsilon and delta is the same. That I can for every value x and for every epsilon, I can find one. Uh, how is it for every epsilon and? Uh, for every x, there exists a delta such that something something holds. So, so this this thing here is is uh, uniformly. Oh, but we are not going we are not going to talk about this. this uniform continuous is is much stronger than normal continuous, and it is useful in some cases. But uh, let's say this is this is more advanced topic. Okay, so so we know that that the function is continuous if if it does not change the values too fast. So what are some nice nice consequences of this? So I will show you a few of the of the nice properties which do not hold in general, and we will explain why the continuity is is necessary necessary. So the first the first uh, theorem um, is is some something called intermediate values theorem. Uh, T or M. Okay, so so what uh, what it means? Okay, so suppose that I have a function which is continuous, let's say everywhere, or at least at some some closed interval, meaning between A and B. So I have two points A and B, such that the function is continuous f is continuous on interval A A B. So inside of this thing, and then I have some values f. Let's say f, f A is here. And let's say f b is down here. Yeah, so so this is this is b and this is this is a. So I have I have this this interval of of f a and f b. I know that uh, there exist points in which the function uh, has the value of of the endpoints of these intervals a and b. But the statement is that then for every every uh, y inside of of this of this interval, there exists some point x such that f x is equal y. Uh, so so basically every intermediate values between these two these two extremes is is found somewhere in inside of the interval. So so if I choose some value, let's say y. Then this this line is is uh, basically crossed somewhere by the function because it starts somewhere here and, and ends here. So it has to be crossed because if it wouldn't be crossed, there would there would be too too big too big change. So so there exists some some point some point x such that f x is equal y. So so this is the, this is the statement we would like to prove. And it makes real sense because if the function is continuous, really, the, there cannot be any jumps. Always, there have to be like smaller and smaller changes. So, so this this can't happen. But we would like to we would like to prove this somehow 
more more exactly more more specifically from the from the definition or or something like that so so how to do it so i will i really like this proof because this is this is very uh like let's say informatic way in computer science way way of of proving so so how would you search for such a point y uh, such a point x so it's very simple so let's take a look inside uh, in the in the middle of of the interval a and b yeah, so let's look at this point a plus b over 2 now yeah, the mid mid the mid the middle and this point could be either so this this let's let's call it m so this fm can have three possible values it could be equal y and then we're okay we're done this is not the case or it could be smaller than y or it could be larger than y so what we will do if it's smaller we will move b to this to this point m and if it's larger then we will move a to the to this point m and in in each case we either finish or we will make our interval in which we work uh, smaller by half yeah, so we we get smaller and smaller intervals and now we iterate this procedure yeah so um, so let me let me uh, write it somehow somehow more specifically so so what we do we have um, two two uh, sequences we have sequence a n of the of the left endpoints and b n of the of the right endpoints yeah and now what what holds uh, we we take a look into midpoint which is a n plus b n over two now we will look at f m and now we have three possibilities that f m is uh, equal to y then we're finished or f m could be larger than y it mean in such a case we put a n plus one equals m yeah, so we, we define the sequences a n n and b n so so we have two two sequences once it's like this and b n plus one equal b or in other case we will we will shift shift the b b to to n so we put this to be equal m and and b uh, and a n plus one equal a so now what's what's happening is that this this distance of a n minus b n this is their distance if if we go with n to infinity this is uh, this is equal to zero yeah so the the distance between a n and b n is, is contracting getting smaller and smaller so in other words we have two sequences a n and b n and they have to converge to some point and let's call this point x yeah, so so a n converges to to x and b n converges also to x yeah it, it can't happen that that basically uh, they would converge to to something else and also it always works that a n is smaller or equal b n uh, because m is always between of them yeah so so basically these two sequences have to converge to some x and the only thing we need to show now is that f x is equal y yeah, so so this is this is the question and we would like to show this so okay so uh, what could uh, what could happen is that uh, we we know that that f a n is larger than y yeah, uh, maybe maybe to be uh, to be more specific here, uh, this uh, this proof is is based that f a is equal uh, is larger than f b. If it would be opposite, then we would we would just switch everything. So we don't care much about this. Yeah. So I uh, just have to state that. Okay. So we know that f a n is larger than y for every for every um, every uh, n. Or for every a n, and also we know that f b n is smaller than y for every a n, and 
Now we will.